hospital and he was and uh, he is one of our faculty and he's one of the popular faculty here <laughs> you have been so, so a, kind <laughs> dr madhav <laughs> he's a full time uh, palliative care specialist in uh, kerala in, uh, in rajagiri uh, it's rajagiri hospital is it right dr right. Yes, yeah. yes and uh, dr selvakorn is uh, practicing in toronto like me Uh, we both are family doctors, and we also do, you know, side business palliative care. Not like you, full time business. <laughs> good morning to both of you. <laughs> Thank you. And, and uh, uh, good evening Ira, to uh, rest of the delegates. Good evening, Vanilla. Uh, good evening, sir. <laughs> good evening, Dr. Mira. Uh, I would really like to pleasure in uh, introducing Dr. Jayarasa. He's a psychiatrist in Klinochi. but uh, you know he made available to get himself trained in palliative care i, I know him through our different other projects uh, so this is meera and this is jayarasa and vinila is uh, our you know coordinator from hyderabad and yes, uh, you know without without her i don't think this is there been a success <laughs> <laughs> so, sir please don't say that thank you so much good evening dr meera i think once i met dr meera during uh, one of our meetings sir some time yes. ago i think yeah. so yes ma'am thank you so much thank you ma'am so uh, usually like we just wait <laughs> for uh, three more minutes and start the yes. session yes. uh, meanwhile anything because i see so many participants have already joined so we have our faculty here moderator here everyone here and any questions anything and given 3 minutes time from the previous session or any doubts uh, you can please uh, ask indigi naangal tamil laiyum kadaippam so ellarum participate pandrathu nalladhu enendal chilavala oru aal rendu vera dhan kadaikkira maari irukum michakal language prachaniyave language endradhu enna solradhu mode of communication than ஏதோ இங்கிலீஷ்ல கேட்கிறதால ஏதோ கணக்கு தெரியும் அந்த மாதிரியும் தமிழ்ல கேட்க கூடாது இல்லை சோ பிளீஸ் தமிழையும் கதையும் நான் கூடிய வரைக்கும் நான் இப்ப டாக்டர் பிஜு ராகவனுக்கு அவருக்கு தமிழ் தெரியாது நான் வந்து வடிவா டிரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணி சொல்லலாம் இங்கிலீஷ்ல கேட்கிறதுனாலும் கதைக்கலாம் சரியான இங்கிலீஷ் என்ற ஒண்ணுமே இல்லை அது சும்மா ஒரு என்ன சொல்றது மாய தோற்றம் அது இங்கிலீஷ்ன்றது so please uh, tamilayum ellarum kalandu vondinga nandal ungal ungala kelviya and innoru nanda no question is a bad question adu nyavamadhu endha kelviyume pilayana kelvi illa adu naangal nekkira sila vela indha kelvi kettal oru vela enakku idu kuda theriya illaye endu yosippina mond appadi edhume illa yaarume inga periya panditharalo periya arivaliyalo undi illa ellarkume vandu kelvi vettu naangal karuthu parimaatram dhaan inga okay uh, i think we'll wait for another minute and uh, we will yes, go sir. from there yes sir so dr jayarasa is very helpful for imho canada activities and especially in kalinochi and uh, you know we actually started a project on uh, women empowerment which didn't go uh, further due to like the covid and a lot of other reasons but he's our local contact in uh, kalinochi and uh, you know that uh, northern province area and he runs a uh, you know working in sri lanka is the most hardest thing especially during covid and there's a lot of stress from all corners <laughs> so i really appreciate everybody uh, like the uh, doctors nurses i don't imagine me i i am an indian graduate i studied in chennai uh, but in the working in sri lanka india is very easy and uh, the system is there sri lanka it's very stressful working and uh, all these people work through the war uh, and you know they have seen through their eyes uh, you know all salute to all of them <laughs> thank you thank you sir thanks a lot and hats off uh, to all of you thank you so much uh, for being with us for the last 3 4 months not 3 4 months yeah from since may onwards and uh, trying to continue your session from the beginning of the course thank you once again so good evening one and all
I think it's 8.5 and we need to take off. So this is Vinila, Program Coordinator from Hyderabad Center for Palliative Care. So I see most of you uh, have renamed yourself, so I did not uh, remind you once again. And But just gentle, gentle reminder that please turn on your video cameras and keep them on throughout the session. This is very important for to mark your attendance. Also, please, anytime if you have any questions, please raise your hand, ask questions. If you cannot speak, please type your question in the chat box. We'll always read it for you. And we have senior most faculty here with us today, both Dr. Biju Raghavan and Dr. Vara uh, Mahadevan. Dr. Varam Mahadevan, and uh, they'll be very happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much. And uh, from my side today, this evening, I'm going to share the screen. For the first participants that us participant that is Dr. Jairas. And uh, sorry, thank uh, you. Uh, you just have to say next slide, sir. I'm going to change the slide yeah. for you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And over to you. And we would like to hear a bit of introduction about yourself, sir, from your side. We heard a lot about from uh, Dr. Vara, but we'd like to hear a bit from you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We all can hear you. Uh, good evening to all. Good morning. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Vara, for your uh, nice introduction. And uh, uh, good evening to all participants and moderators. Uh, I'm Dr. Jay uh, I'm currently working, uh, working in District Health Hospital, in the psychiatric ward. Uh, I'm going to tell a story of 22 year old uh, girl today. Uh, so, before going to the slides, I would like to uh, spend two minutes uh, to brief uh, this story. So, I made this uh, plan. I made this plan in, uh, in, in the medical ward few months back. In the district general hospital, you medical work. She was referred to us to the psychiatric team to assess the uh, mental state and support her. So um, actually, she was 22 year old girl. Uh, actually, uh, currently she in a few months back she presented to medical work with uh, bilateral leg swelling and uh, shortness of breath. That was the uh, that was a presentation a few months back to medical ward district general hospital clinic. Then they uh, they referred this uh, girl to DG hospital Jephna, where they assessed the cardiological or the cardiological assessment and uh, where they she found to have a uh, heart failure and uh, uh, left ventricular dilatation and heart failure and uh, uh, severe pulmonary hypertension. So uh, 12 years back. Uh, exactly uh, 12 years back when she was uh, the age of uh, 10 at the age of 10 so sorry to interrupt do i have to change the slides sir or no no, no. okay, okay. Will, sorry thank you I'll, I'll tell the story and then so um, uh, 10 years back uh, she was uh, during the war time she was uh, investigated for uh, fever pyrexia of unknown origin from kilimachi district general hospital and then she was uh, transferred to Bavania, and then she was transferred to Illare, Lady Victoria Hospital, Columbia, and they have a, she was found to have a um, chronic um, rheumatic valvular heart disease. Uh, and then she was referred back to Pillaki. You know, uh, during the war time, uh, she was referred to the different hospitals, Bavania Hospital, CT Hospital, uh, Devna, and a uh, few uh, local hospitals. So the uh, uh, follow up was not planned and uh, she was defaulted many uh, many times uh, during the time at the same time at the time she she was um, uh, she was kind of, um, under a surgery so bioprosthetic uh, valve replacement done mitral replacement bioprosthetic valve replacement done so with the, currently with that uh, myo, uh, bioprosthetic valve replacement you know so when we uh, when the medical this time when the medical team transferred to the city hospital they have they assessed the heart failure and uh, they told that uh, she was not suitable for the surgical intervention again. So she was um, um, she advised uh, they uh, the team the cardiologist team they advised her to continue as a uh, as a um, the medical management. So uh, transfer back to Kilimanjaro and. Uh, 
and that point she was required to ask uh, ask uh, with, with, with some uh, low mode lack of energy and irritability and all uh, all, all, all kinds of uh, depression. So uh, this is the story where I made this plan. So uh, can you go to the slide please? Yeah, slide number. The, according to our format, I try to put the uh, uh, case presentation. The key questions um, always in the palliative, uh, palliative side, uh, the, um, the, the communication gap uh, was there. So as usual in, in this world uh, also, we, we have some, uh, in the many places, we have gaps in the communication with the patient regarding the illness and outcome and the prognosis. Second thing, the uh, second thing I would like to tell is uh, how the, 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 the psychosocial well-being and um, uh, uh, actually uh, in the next slides we can see the family tree of this world. Then we can uh, know about the, the family structure. Actually, this uh, family was this of my family. So she was the member of the uh, of my family. So how these psycho psychosocial and psychological Things are uh, affecting the terminal care of the palliative care of, of the patient. Thirdly, I did, uh, did not write here that uh, third thing that I, I would like to mention uh, in the post conflict area uh, how difficult to get, uh, especially the chronic uh, illnesses and the, uh, and, and the terminal care illnesses, are how uh, badly affected uh, in, in the Post war or post conflict uh, area, especially in the remote areas, and uh, we uh, ten year after the war. So uh, the poverty and the family disorganized family setup and uh, all sorts of uh, things are affecting this kind of patients very badly. Next slide. This is the detail of the patient, uh, twenty-two year old girl. Um, uh, actually, chronic rheumatic heart disease with severe mitral biopathetic risk stenosis. So I told, uh, I mentioned that 12 years back she was um, uh, um, underwent a surgery, uh, an LRH colon uh, uh, She was um, bioprosthetic uh, valve replacement uh, uh, done. So actually. Uh, I have some questions that uh, why uh, why they choose the bioprosthetic uh, valve to this particular patient. Uh, I guess uh, uh, actually currently she, she doesn't have a, the medical record also. But some reasons that uh, after the, uh, the prosthetic valve replacement she might uh, uh, have a walker in uh, treatment. And uh, the warfarin treatment with the PCI and not, uh, and uh, follow up uh, at that time, 12 years back in puberty, because uh, maybe they, they, they thought to uh, continue the warfarin uh, and, uh, and uh, set up a uh, proper follow up. Uh, they may go for a bio, bioprosthetic uh, valve retest. So now, currently, that bioprosthetic valve is with risk uh, risk. And grade 3 to 4 mitral regurgitation and severe pulmonary hepatitis. So, after, uh, after the discussion, um, in the, um, the report from Trinity General Hospital to Teaching Hospital, and then uh, cardiothoracic, they, uh, they, they have assessed and they, uh, they told uh, her that uh, the, the surgery is to carry uh, high risk. So, uh, go for a medical management. Next slide. So, again, uh, the reason for the admission, um, reason for the admission to district general hospital clinically, uh, after, uh, after, the, after she um, came from uh, teaching hospital just now, a few weeks after she admitted again to uh, district general hospital um, the reason for the admission is uh, irritable, uh, crying spells, 
that prevents various feet and hepatitis and isolation, suicidal thoughts, uh, uh, and the shortness of breath, uh, anything let them take medication, especially the the she um, was on uh, on the medication, few medication, but uh, let them to take medication. Uh, because she told me that uh, uh, short, uh, told me that uh, I'm going to give a short period, so why I I have to take medication? That's what she mentioned. Next slide. So past medical history in 2010, at the age of uh, 10 years, uh, investigated for fever in pregnancy, and then uh, transferred pneumonia and then uh, transferred. To uh, LRH and uh, diagnosis, uh, diagnosis as a rheumatic cardiologist, great OMR, moderate pulmonary hypertension, moderate mitral stenosis, and gross uh, uh, left atrium and left ventricular dialysis. Next slide. Uh, and, uh, past medical history uh, is continuing. Uh, mitral valve replacement uh, done. So as I mentioned earlier, tissue pericardial valve. So why replace with this valve? Uh, this tissue valve at the time, maybe valve cannot be repaired uh, with the prosthetic valve. And so maybe second reason, the difficult and unbelievable anticoagulant as patient with uh, telemetry. And third one is mechanical valve replacement, which needs anticoagulant and she must be able to have a children. Uh, that is also uh, one reason uh, maybe on work at it, she may not be uh, able to have a children. And uh, in September um, 2021, uh, the current admission, when she referred to the psychiatric team, uh, our team, uh, we, uh, we assessed her uh, and uh, our diagnosis was moderate to severe depression disorder with our psychotic fever. Uh, this was uh, our right uh, now. Next slide. So uh, her uh, drug history is uh, she was on Prusamide 14 milligram money, Spironolactone 25 milligram money, ACL two tablet TBS, um, Astelin uh, 500 microgram, so Prusamide folic acid and. Uh, the, for the depressive part, uh, uh, sertraline 50 mg, non and uh, clonazepam 25 mg, nocte or SOS basis. Next slide, please. So, uh, allergic history, she, yeah, she has some uh, allergic to ginger, tomatoes, and some uh, seafood. Next slide, please. Uh, social history. I am very interested to uh, tell uh, this social history. You can see uh, my client, um, uh, he, was, uh, uh, he was the third of uh, five siblings in a family. All five are female. The father died early, uh, and the mother married. Uh, uh, married second time, the first part of Mason is a severe alcoholic. They have some domestic violence in the family also. So, the, this family, um, uh, the second one is, uh, is, 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 is my dad. Third one also died uh, during the war. So, actually, this is a typical pattern in Vadmi now. Uh, this family is a uh, woman headed family. With a lot of difficulties, post conflict, uh, poverty, all sort of uh, difficulties, uh, alcoholic, uh, and again, the sex father and domestic, and all sort of things. So, with all this uh, disorganized setup, uh, the mother cannot uh, look after this, uh, this uh, girl uh, very well. The mother cannot afford to uh, take her to uh, medical. Um, uh, Consultations and follow-ups and all sort of problems. This is not only one. This is a, a one example, but lot of uh, chronic patients, uh, lot of uh, terminal care patients, lot of cancer terminal care patients are in 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 the same social uh, social setup. So 
So after certain marriage, the children separated from the mother because of uh, because of stepfather, the the children they also grown up, so they separated from mother. The patient uh, only with the mother um, because uh, she was uh, she needs a help and caretaker. So she is the only person with mother, and uh, uh, so. Uh, uh, the other siblings are not uh, not happy with this uh, particular patient also because the patient is uh, is uh, only hoping only hope is the mother even the mother is uh, married second time but only hope is for the patient is mother so patient is mother the other siblings are not talking with the, with, with my patient so uh, very difficult to make a uh, very difficult to arrange a family meeting to explain uh, these situations, the patient situation to the each and every sickest, and uh, very difficult to explain the situation to stepfather, uh, stepfather um, the, the, the situation. Um, so next slide, please. So uh, examination. And uh, the investigation, the second day of the admission, you can see the blood pressure, pulse rate, uh, SpO2, uh, 92, sometimes it is in both sides, uh, see, very mild, uh, shortness of breath, sometimes uh, even they are not very strong of that. In two ago, you can see the chronic uh, rheumatic heart disease, severe mitral heart disease, stenosis, grade 3 to 4, inner and severe hypertension. Actually, she was. Uh, I think in 2012 years back when she was in uh, LRH, uh, she was advised to at least to have a echo, to be echo once in three years. Uh, but uh, due to the internal uh, displacement and uh, travel restrictions in, in North part, she could not do that. So that is the main reason uh, uh, when uh, that is the uh, the main reason we are uh, the, the younger 22 year old girl end up with the terminal illness. Uh, the chronic illness very quickly develops uh, after the heart failure. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, currently, the management uh, uh, management for chronic rheumatic valvular heart disease. Second uh, thing for cardiac failure. Lower respiratory tract infection, urinary tract infection, and moderate to severe depression. This was the current, uh, the, the last admission uh, where the, the, the girl was referred to uh, psychiatric team. Uh, when we found her, these are the diagnoses. She was on management for these uh, conditions. Next slide. So, so managing given sorry we have two more okay. yeah oxygen uh, we are masked and uh, some antibiotics uh, augmenting the acids uh, and uh, uh, we can go through the list of medications but finally when she met me uh, she told uh, she refused to take all those medications uh, some of uh, we need to reassure her and be friend her and uh, uh, to at least to extend the day from the life, uh, we need to do a lot of things uh, to, uh, to talk with her and to extend the life. Next slide, please. So, psychosocial and the family concern here, yeah, I mentioned the collapse family setting that is actually not collapse, that is disorganized family setup. And experiencing the domestic violence, stepfather currently under the college has had some problems. Loneliness after mother going to work, depression, suicidal thoughts, what can you take medications? Uh, but the, even though the, the mother is very care, caring uh, towards her, mother is very supportive. Uh, mother also, unfortunately, no patient with the depression and uh, taking the medication for not Next slide. So spiritual concerns uh, in the beginning, no hope, but later on, 
uh, they actually uh, they are the Hindus by birth, but they have um, during their illness and all they have uh, changed their religion to Catholic. Uh, some different different Catholic and now they are following uh, following that and they are going to some church. Communication. Um, uh, she was uh, diagnosed at the age of 10, but uh, due to many reasons, uh, the, the communications was uh, there were a lot of gaps because um, she was diagnosed at LRI and then preferred to all and being in hospital at Jetna and Pilna Hospital and any other local hospital uh, due to the internal uh, displacement and uh, travel restriction. So she did not uh, get the um, uh, she did not follow the illness. Uh, uh, she, she did not follow up uh, very well. And uh, uh, when we uh, discussing with her, she looks clueless uh, about the illness and, uh, and the condition and the prognosis and all those things. So we need to uh, we need to emphasize all the things uh, from the beginning, and we need to tell all the things uh, to the patient as well as the family. So through a family meeting. Uh, yeah. So her, uh, her, she told us that uh, she will she will be very happy that uh, all her family members, uh, with uh, all her siblings, all all her siblings, uh, she will be with, with the unite uh, with the mother. Uh, she did not mention anything about the uh, stepfather, but uh, she uh, she mentioned that she will be very happy uh, during the last. Uh, Last uh, day, and when she with the uh, with, with the mom and uh, and the other all other siblings, so she she wants the family be good. Next slide. Collaboration and the partnership, psychiatric team, uh, general physician and uh, the cardiology team, uh, cardio surgical team, nursing team, uh, physiotherapy. Psychiatric social worker has an important role in this particular. Actually, the, this uh, psychiatric social worker and the community social worker and family, um, the, the nursing officers and the physiotherapists, they are, uh, have a very, uh, very important role to manage this during the hospital admission as well as the community. Excellent. Main concern, uh, uh, my main con uh, concern is, uh, is uh, like, uh, this girl is a 22 year uh, young girl, end up with a uh, end state uh, uh, illness, cardiac failure. Uh, I think um, this is the main reason is um, um, she, uh, she may, um, this same condition, she may uh, prolong the the condition uh, we think, but due to the uh, follow up and uh, the current restrictions and displacement, uh, all those things, poverty of the family and the resource, we think uh, uh, she, she was affected. Uh, she, she, she became very early uh, to this day. So, this is my concern uh, in both conflict uh, areas, like clinic and in the people, the chronic illness uh, people. Chronic uh, patients, patients are affecting. Uh, they are the they are the main vulnerable group in in, in our area. Next step. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much, Dr. Jairaza. That was an excellent presentation uh, about a young girl. So idhilerun dengalag enna teri dandal. Palliative care is uh, cancer ko matte mille. Even other uh, diseases, medical diseases, there can be palliative care. So I think due to the time constraint, I'm going to just switch to Dr. Biju Raghavan for his opinion, and then we will move on to the next uh, presentation. Then we can have a, a question and answer. Dr. Biju Raghavan, over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. I can understand why uh, Dr. Mahadevan spoke so highly of uh, Dr. Selviraj. It shows in uh, not only the excellent Dr. Jay Rasa, sorry, Dr. J. Rasa, Dr. J. Rasa, uh, pardon my 
you know uh, yeah so uh, it is not only an excellently presented case it is very comprehensive uh, the apart from the physical aspects of the disease and associated issues a uh, very comprehensive look into the psychosocial spiritual issues are there and uh, from what i understand she may be actually suffering from clinical depression for uh, which uh, she is definitely in good hands in professional hands plus uh, she has been communicated to and i was really uh, you know uh, well uh, very good that in, in one of the slide the last part was she has uh, reconciled now she wants to be happy with her mother and her siblings so that was the best possible outcomes that we could have achieved for her i hope she is physically comfortable uh, uh, you know uh, any kind of physical distress should be file palliated because until unless you are physically comfortable you can't ever be psychologically comfortable uh, of course there are other factors which will contribute to psychological distress but physical distress uh, definitely needs to be taken so palliative care is comfort care and palliative medicine the science of uh, providing comfort physically emotionally socially spiritually so thank you uh, for that excellent presentation if there is anything specific that uh, the audience may want to bring up uh, based on this issue or if there is any specific that uh, either you dr madhavan or uh, you know, anybody else wants to discuss i think that would be the good way to go forward in the limited time that we have all the participants are welcome to post your questions or ask questions so any questions from the participant side either you can raise your hand or just maybe ask or uh, just type your question in the chat box uh, i would like to ask one question yes sir uh, what what was the reason why there was such Uh, a, a drifting away among the siblings i understand the father died and the mother remarried and the stepfather was abusive and for some time the siblings did had to be kept at different places but when they came back our patient experienced some hostility from a sibling i wonder why was that uh, explored Doctor Jera, so over to you. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I didn't get you. I, I didn't get you because. No, what the, was that? Ain uh, uvula the siblings ikla uvula animosity ain vanda the uvula idhir pugalam chandayam. What was the reason for yeah, the siblings? Uh, what, yeah, what happened? Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, family ikla vande nadi and the stepfather. Uh, I mean, on alcohol. is alcohol he is having a morbid jealousy he is avan enna seyvarana avarku suspicious igavala uh, suspicious so ange vandu nadu adipaarna appo avan pillaygal vandu is it is it domestic violence so adala pillaygalukku avan father endu or varuppu so i think the padangona yeah then valandona vel vandu amma ga call panninaame neenga avara vittu kiriye thirumbi yeah appadi illadi avel thangala thangala paada paadu vandu ave ellam veliyave ave mail panni kudutu yeah an alcoholic stepfather and uh, this organized family i think that must be the reason for them to yeah why i asked was because uh, the patient uh, has express a desire to spend the rest of her life uh, with her um, uh, mother as well as with the siblings so when she yes. goes back to them would she be welcome back has the differences has that been sorted out because of the social stress remains that is going to reflect on her psychological well being yeah now uh, father's alcohol also 
we are looking to that uh, step father's alcohol problem is alcohol uh, is harmful use of alcohol, uh, use of alcohol that also we are looking to that uh, we so in, in that condition the siblings uh, they they are they are happy to do it so the mother uh, one question before we move on to dr jera sir is she really palliative that's my question because this is a rheumatic heart disease yeah. can she be uh, explained well and uh, i mean take a risk for a surgery you know a valve replacement this uh, science has grown so much now can that be done look at as not as a palliative but on a treatment wise yeah um, i think um, because it seems the doctors yeah. everybody has given up on her <laughs> yeah yeah i think uh, she can consider as a uh, this situation can consider as a palliation nan nan epdi adu podradendal varungo ningal ipo ningal saga poringal epdiyo epdiye ningal treat panna vittal 3 maasamo 6 maasathiliye setu poveengal surgery seivam அது வந்து சக்சஸ் ஆகிற ரேட் இவ்வளவு இருக்குது நீங்கள் இன்னும் ஒரு இருபது முப்பது வருஷம் கூட இருக்கலாம் ட்ரை பண்ணி பார்ப்போம் யூனோ ஐ திங்க் தட் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் அ டாக் அண்ட் ஐ திங்க் யூ ஹாவ் அ லாட் ஆஃப் ரெஸ்பெக்ட் இன் த கம்யூனிட்டி மேபி யூ வாண்ட் டு அப்ரோச் தட் வே அண்ட் ஐ திங்க் ஜஃப்னா டீச்சிங் ஹாஸ்பிட்டல் ஹேஸ் அ குட் கார்டியோ தொராசிக் சர்ஜரி அண்ட் தே கேன் டூ சம்திங் டு ஹர் எனிவே ஐ வில் லீவ் இட் யூ அபவுட் தட் Yes. <laughs> that is beyond the scope. Ahead. I think, can we, Dr. Raghavan, can we move to the next, per, next presentation? One, yes. One yes, sir. Uh, you can provide palliative care along with disease uh, management. Uh, for, for example, uh, not just oncology, any disease, because the role of palliative care is to provide comfort either yeah. with the disease treatment or without comfort. the disease treatment if the disease is uh, what you call if it is curable your curative intervention along with it you can provide palliative care so that treatment as less well comfort care is possible if the disease is incurable but the patient is not terminally so conservative disease management along with palliative care is possible for example long term care for debilitated elderly with multi organ issues uh with patients with interstitial lung disease or motor neuron diseases so along with the disease specialist providing conservative management we we partner with various specialties so that is possible and the last part is end of life care uh, which i assume you are referring to as palliative care end of life care is one aspect of palliative care where the palliative care specialist uh, is uh, the best person so to speak in because that's a speciality area of palliative care but uh, palliative care can also be provided along with disease treating disease uh, uh, curative disease intervention or conservative disease intervention so i'll just close with excellent this. ஸோ இப்போ இந்த கேஸில் நாங்கள் டேக் ஹோம் மெசேஜ் என்று சொல்லி ரெண்டு பாயிண்ட் இப்போ சொல்லியிருக்கிறோம் டாக்டர் பிஜு ராகவன் கிளியராக சொல்லியிருக்கிறேன் ஏன்னென்றால் முதல் இது வந்து நாங்கள் இன்றைக்கு இதன் மூலம் நாங்கள் தெரிந்து கொள்வது இந்த திருவிடையாளர் படத்தில் சொல்ல இதன் மூலம் நீர் சொல்ல வருவது என்ன அந்த மாதிரி அந்த புலவர் கேப்பரில் அந்த மாதிரி ரெண்டு பாயிண்ட் ஒன்று வந்து பெலியேட்டிவ் கேர் இஸ் நாட் ஓன்லி ஃபார் கேன்சர் பேஷண்ட் அண்ட் இட் இஸ் நாட் ஓன்லி ஃபார் என் ஆஃப் லைஃப் கேர் அது ஒரு பாயிண்ட் ரெண்டாவது palliative care vand can go along with the curative care end of life care vand adu or part of palliative care indha rendu message we got it from this uh, uh, case thank you very much uh, dr j rasa and dr biju raghavan let's move to the next one yeah. thank you sir maybe uh, there's one more question in the chat we'll just come back to you sir uh, after the second present hope that's all right with the pads yes thank you sir so i now request uh, Ms. Sivapalan, uh, can you just see my uh, slides? Ms. Sivapalan? Sivapalan, you are here. Thank you. Oh, I can see. Yes. You just have to tell the next slide. I'll change the slides for you, madam. Ah, okay. Sivapalan, what's your name? Oh, oh, oh. 
please okay, introduce yourself please. yeah uh, good morning uh, good evening all, all of you uh, so i am nursing inter nursing officer uh, at the district general hospital in kolanaruva so uh, i met one uh, mother uh, she is uh, 31 years old uh, she uh, diagnosis with breast carcinoma and doctors plan to do the mastectomy so uh, i have to challenge uh, with this patient for the how to give the uh, psychological support because uh, this is the uh, part of the body so she never accept to the Uh, mastectomy so i got the challenge to how to give the support this psychological support and how can get the consent for this surgery and how to manage this uh, patient for the further uh, management next slide also these are the key questions next slide uh so patient detail uh, she is uh, 31 years old and female so uh, she got the um, diagnosis on left breast cancer on 17 september 2021 uh, but uh, other diagnosis are no next slide so in the hospital admin uh, admission uh, she Uh, she uh, on the pain in the breast uh, uh, breast area and she feel the uh, swelling left side breast is swelling uh, than the right side and feel the mass uh, hard mass also so that's why he, she admitted to the hospital and on admission uh, her pulse rate and uh, uh, blood pressure and spo2 level are normal and uh, on the pain scale uh, on admission her pain scale is uh, 7 over 10 and uh, pro- we give the tramadol 50 mg uh, for the pain and she take for uh, if need for the pain so she take the uh, tramadol 50 mg uh, and uh, do the uh, chest x ray and the mammography also Uh, next slide please okay. uh, she uh, have been any uh, past medical history next slide okay. uh, in now uh, uh, her pain and symptoms are uh, she feel lethargy and fear about her disease um, and uh, through through the he, she uh, think about her disease condition she lost her sleep and uh, she uh, reduced the food index so so that uh, she lost her weight also and she feel the pain uh, in the left uh, breast area and the uh, left side breast also swelling uh, next slide next slide in the psych, uh, psychosocial and family concern she is a teacher and a married one she also 31 and young age uh, so she has a daughter uh, four years old and uh, her uh, she take care by her husband and mother uh, they provide the good family support uh, she knows about her disease condition but she didn't accept the surgery so for the uh, so this is a early diagnosis so if uh, she do the surgery we can uh, we improve the disease condition but uh, we to, 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 told about that one but she didn't accept for the surgery so i need uh, to more uh, give the psychological support uh, with her communication she think about her disease condition and uh, she think her daughter also affected by this kind of disease because um, um, her the patient uh, aunt got the uh, mastectomy 
also the breast cancer so early diagnosis uh, that uh, her aunt also do the mastectomy but uh, unfortunately that uh, metastasis occur and uh, she also died so uh, she think this is not curable uh, disease so uh, why i have to do the surgery and she uh, she avoid this surgery and other thing is uh, this is the uh, body part and uh, change of the body image if, uh, if the remove the breast that uh, can't accept this is the most important in the self image and the uh, body shape so uh, she not uh, accept to do the uh, mastectomy so and other thing uh, she think uh, she wants to get uh, she is a young age and she has a one baby so she also want to another baby also so if do, do the mastectomy she uh, she uh, affected by the, she didn't uh, lo, uh, sorry she lost her fertility and uh, she she think my husband uh, love also lost and uh, can't uh, she, sometimes husband give up me so that thoughts uh, she uh, give uh, she didn't con concern for the mastectomy next slide okay in the spiritual concern um she hoped the uh, god but um, she a uh, question for the why this is happening for my family for why god my me so like that she thought and uh, but she had the god faith next so in the communication uh, she can uh, communicate with us uh, but, but we have to encourage her to spend with time with her child and family and encourage her uh, at the hobby hobbies also and uh, we did the family meeting uh, only one family meeting next slide next slide okay uh, so this is the uh, question discussion for i want to discuss with this group how the, as she a girl so she have to do the mastectomy also but she she don't give the support for the surgery so how to i give the psychological support and how to manage this patient for the for management okay thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sivadaini. Oh, that was a very brief but very effective presentation. Uh, let me go to Dr. Biju Rahavan, please. Uh, thank you, Sivadaini. That was a very good presentation. Uh, and uh, lot of lot of issues uh, you have brought. uh i don't know where to start uh, she has physical uh, issues pain but you said sorry so, i think there is a disturbance uh, in your voice i don't know like there is uh is Maybe it still there push your headphones jack a little bit inside hello hello is uh, yeah. now it's better better sir okay i don't know what i did i just <laughs> followed dr mahadevan's advice so <laughs> all right so i think uh, we are we are running short of time so i just give a couple of my opinion and i would leave it to for all of you to you know talk about the uh, simple thing i'll speak first physical pain uh i always maintain that you cannot have any other kind of uh, relief until unless you relieve the physical distress they're extremely sorry biju sir so sorry this uh, like great discussion there is some uh, disturbance uh, in your voice extremely sorry so i would actually suggest take the pin out and plug it in again
does that make any difference ba excellent sir thank you so much okay uh, i i guess maybe this microphone was rubbing against my shirt probably yes. causing some dis- disturbance yes. all right so uh, i think i'll go um, first to the simpler things pain management uh, is never done sos you have to give some kind of baseline regular analgesia on top of that you can provide sos so that if there is a breakthrough pain you can provide a sos rescue dose it is never just sos so that is something that we can think of uh, i am not going into the depths of what to use and etc who ladder i am not going into there we don't have time for that then we definitely have a person i am assuming with a curable stage malignancy refusing uh, the treatment based on past experiences within the relatives based on body image based on uh, fear of uh, losing uh, uh, you know losing out on relationship and other domestic and pers- social issues so whole host of things so there are beliefs that needs to be recalibrated uh we need to un- we need to talk to the the patient's husband as to what he thinks i mean uh, you know probably he will choose his wife being alive over you know a loss of a, a body part uh he would rather have his wife uh, being there and taking care of uh, i mean him uh, taking care of her to, to recover and then she being you know brought back to normal life to take care of you know being part of the regular social fabric and domestic uh, aspects of life so a series of uh, uh, sessions counseling sessions with the patient with the husband together separately all of these things uh would be required because uh, we should not lose a, a a patient with a curable medical condition um, because this is based on time you you let this happen soon there will be metastasis and then uh, that doesn't mean it's the end of the care, uh, care uh, plan for malignancy uh, but uh, we must really double our efforts uh for you know getting them to see reason if it is a curable stage medical uh, malignancy thank you uh, dr biju um, i think you can stop sharing vinila uh, so idile dr biju raghavan sonna enna endal vadivaga and the family oda vilangapadi naangal kadaikiradile irukkira oru advantage vande seriyana mukkiyam இதில் நான் எந்த இது ஆட் பண்ணுறது என்றால் இதில் பார்த்தீங்களா என்றால் சில புள்ளி விவரங்களை வெளிக்கு சொல்லலாம் இவ்வளவு சர்ஜரி செய்த இப்போ எல்லாம் சர்ஜரி செய்து முழு பிரெஸ்ட்டும் எடுக்கிறது இல்லை ஏர்லி ஸ்டேஜ் என்றால் தே டூ சம்திங் கால் லம் பெக்டமி என்று அப்போ அதால் வராது பட் அது ஃபேமிலி ஒரு யூனோ ஃபேமிலி கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் இஸ் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் எல்லாரையும் வந்து ஒரே நேரத்தில் லெமியா இன்வைட் டாக்டர் மீரா செல்வகோன் டு கிவ் ஹர் ஒப்பீனியன் அபவுட் திஸ் i think um addressing the fears is really important um so i think a family conference will help if there's fears about having another baby um it's encouraging that you can have children after breast cancer uh, there are alternative ways to feed the baby if it's a double mastectomy for example you can feed the baby with formula that shouldn't be a deterrent for pursuing uh, going for treatment Uh, but i think a lot of it is the counseling aspect and sometimes it may not just happen over one session it's um it may happen over several sessions where you plant that idea and uh, and then follow up again afterwards and and then getting the husband in on the discussion i think is important because it sounds like to the patient the husband's feelings are very important so if you can get the patient to understand that the husband wants her to be alive more than any thing to do with body image and um, that will maybe convince her that maybe treatment is the way to go so thank you dr meera and and all idu vandu oru sikkalana vishayam neengal oru nursing officer la than start pandra enna neengal la patient oda 
கனநேரமா இருக்க போறீங்க நர்சிங் ஆஃபீசர்ஸ் இன்னொரு விஷயம் சர்ஜன்ஸ் ஆர் எக்ஸலன்ட் பீப்புள் சில சமயம் அவைகளுக்கு டைம் இருக்காது எக்ஸ்பிளைன் பண்றதுக்கு அவை நேரம் வந்து சொல்லி போட்டு போயிருந்தோம் அம்மா இது வந்து சர்ஜரி மட்டும்தான் வேற வழி இல்லை என்று வினம் அப்ப பேஷண்ட் பயந்துடுவினம் அடுத்தது எங்கள மாதிரி ஃபேமிலி ஃபிசிஷியன்ஸ் ஓ ஜிபிஸ் வி டேக் அ லாட் ஆஃப் டைம் ஐ வுட் லைக் டு குயிக்லி ஷேர் ஒன் ஆஃப் த ஸ்லைட்ஸ் ஐ ஹேவ் இந்த மெத்தட் வந்து நாங்கள் வி டூ திஸ் இன் கனடா இந்த மெத்தட் வந்து ஃபேமிலி டாக்டர்ஸ் எல்லாருமே நாட் ஈவன் பேலியேட்டிவ் கேர் ஃபிசிஷியன்ஸ் இட் கேன் பி அப்ளை டு பேலியேட்டிவ் கேர் நான் ஒரு ஸ்லைட் ஒன்று காட்ட போறேன் அது வந்து நாங்கள் செய்தோம் என்றால் எனி திங் we will be very successful idu vande naangal as an examiner for the family physicians idu vande oru family physician if they don't do this we will fail them that is the thing meera you know about the five thing so i'm going to share this is called patient centered medicine so illness experience and solradhu so patients are as adavadhu inda oru noin anubavam enna edukkirathu you see this fife உங்களுக்கு மனதுல தளர்வு இருக்குதா இதுல என்ன பயம் இருக்குது என்ன ஃபீல் பண்றீங்க இதை நாங்கள் பார்க்கணும் நாலு பாயிண்ட் ரெண்டாவது ஐடியா வாட் இஸ் யோர் ஐடியா உங்களுக்கு வந்திருக்கிறது கேன்சர் என்றா என்னென்று தெரியுமா வாட் இஸ் கேன்சர் டியூனோ என்னென்ன இது இருக்கு ஆஸ் தெம் அவைகளுக்கு எக்ஸ்ப்ளோர் தே ஐடியா ராதர் தேன் யூ டெலிங் தெம் வாட் தே வாண்ட் டு நோ ஸோ செகண்ட் இஸ் ஐடியா மூன்றாவது திஸ் இஸ் ஆக்சுவலி ஃபங்க்ஷன் என்றது இட்ஸ் மெயின்லி ஃபார் ஃபேமிலி மெடிசின் இப்போ ஒரு நோய் வந்துட்டால் அவைண்ட் ஃபங்க்ஷன் அவையில் நீங்கள் சொன்ன அந்த பாடி இமேஜ் பிள்ளை பெறணும் அவை இந்த ஃபங்க்ஷன் அவைக்கு வேலை செய்யல நோ ஜாப் தே கெனாட் ஹவு இஸ் த ஃபங்க்ஷன் இஸ் அஃபெக்டட் த ஃபோர்த் ஒன் இஸ் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் வாட் இஸ் தே ஆர் எக்ஸ்பெக்டேஷன் என்ன எதிர்பார்க்குறீங்க இந்த கேன்சர் உங்களுக்கு வந்துட்டுது இதிலிருந்து நீங்கள் நீண்ட நாள் உயிரோட வாழணும்னு நினைக்கிறீங்களா இல்லாட்டில் உடம்பு அழகா இருந்து கொஞ்ச நாள்ல போகணும்னு நினைக்கிறீங்களா வாட் இஸ் யோ ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் ஆக்சுவலி ஆஸ்கிங் த பேஷன்ஸ் to tell us how the illness is experienced by them doing this with everything will be make us very easy to approach the patient okay thank you doc okay so thank you very much i think we have to address some questions uh so tanujanan says tanujanan ningal vaanga screen ku you can tell your opinion on the screen tanujanan are you there yes so sir he said he the, yeah go ahead yeah i think sir uh, first we can give the health education and the counseling to the best person is the husband i think if the husband is uh, tells uh, his wife to uh you can uh, remove the uh, i mean uh, you can do the mastectomy mastectomy so if we if it is not problem for our future and our future life so maybe the wife can accept that one so the main part the main person is husband so we need to uh, convince the husband part so other than the talk with the wife so first we want to talk with the husband i think that's my opinion that's a, that's a great suggestion adala naangal ipa engana naadugala canada us la ella we are called family doctors because we treat the whole family not we don't we no longer call the gps here general practitioner is gone past term now we call a family doctors because we not only treat the patient family in treat pandrathu thank you danujanan uh, let me ask uh, tamayandan ungada opinion enna tamayandan uh, உண்மையிலே சார் கனியன் சொன்ன மாதிரி முதல் பயப்படுறது சோயரிக்கு பயப்படுறது வந்து ஃபேமிலியை படித்தான் எனக்கு ஒரு சோயரி நடந்தா ஹஸ்பண்டோ பிள்ளையோ அதால வேக் பண்ணப்படுமா ஹஸ்பண்ட் எல்லாம் விட்டுட்டு போயிடுவாரு அந்த அங்க பிரசன்டேஷன்ல சொன்ன மாதிரி அதை கரெக்ட் பண்ணா சார் மோஸ்ட்லி ஒய்ஃப் கன்சர்ன் தரக்கூடிய நிலைமை எல்லாம் இருக்குது இதை பொறுத்தவரை இருந்தா போல காணாம போயிட்டீங்க 
மேபி விலாஸ் பிரசாந்த் பிரசாந்த் உங்களோட ஒபீனியன் என்ன சுதீஷ் பவன் பிரசாந்த் ஒரு <laughs> So especially most of the patients, they need the motivation and inspiration. More than giving the drugs, more than giving the medicine, if we motivate them, most of the patients, they get cured from the uh, cancer. Uh, so uh, first, we have to motivate the husband. Through the husband, we have to motivate the lady. So it, it will be the, the most successful, I, I feel. Um, so anyhow whatever happened we are not going to live for 100 years or 500 years so we have to make them to realize the reality of the situation step by step not directly uh, so uh, even some people they died uh, at the age of 5 10 20 35 35 or whatever age uh, healthy people even unhealthy unhealthy people are living for long so we have to make them to realize the real situation reality of the life this is uh, i think important perfect thank you so much uh, paul raj that was excellent uh, thought i think we are running short of time we have two minutes left if anybody want to have a comment or tamil line jollalam english line jollalam prashant ningal edho solla vandha ningal naan adukku cut panni rendu mute la irukku yes i also agree with the the previous uh, people the discussion and uh, also family members with the husband is a very important role to the discussion then only we can get the concern from that uh, woman so the other than that i want one uh, clarification from the not in this case the first case the okay. which point we can take it as a palliative care as a congenital heart disease patient so which point we will make a, as a palliation so who is the responsible person take the decision of this palliation so the can can cardiologist the or the cardiologist yeah. or the vp from this side that, that is good, good question uh, can i ask dr j rasa idla vandha i think, uh, I think uh, uh, the the surgery uh, is uh, carrying uh, high risk and uh, uh, when they do the cardiothoracic team, i think not physicians it's a cardiothoracic team. So we are solely dealing with surgery high risk and yeah. oh did they give any percentage evlo percentage avlo percentage and apdi onnu solla illa enna percentage apdi avilla solla illa but now day even yeah plan is not even go for uh, surgical yeah. injections and now day even now uh, she is young no other comorbidities heart transplant easy a cheyidu kodu poranga i don't know <laughs> anyway that's beyond our scope of uh, discussion but your question cardiothoracic surgery team has determined is very high risk so she becomes palliation maybe next year she is alive and there is a new technology we have to revisit maybe this can be turn around to another will follow on and uh, yes we'll as dr raghavan biju raghavan said palliative care is not the end of uh, like that is part but we have to revisit periodically what else can we do what else is available there the technology i have a, i had a cancer patient uh, last year she was diagnosed but we were doing palliative care but this year they approved a new drug and it completely cured her cancer uh, and uh, there was another young lady they did a stem cell transplant now she is fine so she is no longer palliation so the take home message let me uh, conclude uh, is uh, we already said palliative care is not only for cancer it can be a comfort care and palliative care should go along with other curative care as such family is very important and patient centered approach 
will be much, much easier to go and uh, patient-centered, that means family-centered approach and counseling and talking to the patient and all these will help a long way to get a good palliative care. If that's the take-home message today, Dr. Biju Raghavan, last word from you. <laughs> no, I totally agree. Uh, 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 regarding the patient, uh, I, I, I agree with all the speakers who have chipped in. Uh, so that's the way to go. Series of family sessions, family counseling sessions, motivating the patient motivating the husband and you know getting the husband on uh, part of the motivating team so that is the way to go uh, I, I see the usage of word palliation which sounds like we are talking about end of life care so I would uh, the last words would be there is palliative care and there is end of life care palliative care you can give to any patient who is suffering suffering physically, emotionally, socially, spiritually, irrespective of disease, irrespective of stage of disease. Non-malignant, malignant doesn't matter. End of life care is a decision you take with a lot of responsibility. Uh, the treating uh, specialist, preferably a medical board, making sure that we are indeed talking about a disease which is incurable, progressive, advanced, and hence, further evidence-based medical disease-focused interventions are unlikely to give you the returns that you're looking for. The disease-focused interventions now seems to be inappropriate and potentially harmful to the patient if pursued. And hence, no further disease-focused intervention henceforth. That means henceforth, the patient is deemed terminally ill and then the situation appropriate management strategy would be end of life comfort care. So again, who are the best people to provide end of life comfort care? Specialist in palliative care. But specialist in palliative care do end of life comfort care, uh, but they also do a lot of other supportive care measures. So I just want to convey that palliative care is one thing, end of life care is another. So these two words are to be used as they are meant to be used. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Biju Raghavan. There is a, um, Shobika has given us a great uh, suggestion because in uh, places like Canada, we have support groups for many things. If a, or a breast cancer survivor support group and mundi in the disease on the way sharing their experience. I don't think Sri Lanka will in the mother vadiva develop further going. I think we all can uh, get in and say uh, cardiac surgery say they will have a support group sharing their experience and somebody is diagnosed new will actually talk to them and they are ordinary people not medical professionals so in oh enak indha mari oru vyadhi vandathu enak surgery seidhu ipo na nalla irukren indha mari so that is a great idea thank you shobika for bringing that up yes over to you vinila thank you sir thank you so much i see thank you uh, dr jairasa and uh, Thank you, Mr. Vipalan. Such a great uh, presentation from both of you and lots of discussion. Thank you so much, Vara sir and Biju sir for agreeing to be as a moderator in the faculty, uh, even though it's a last minute change of plan. Thank you. Thanks to both of you. And I have shared the feedback link in the chat box, requesting all the participants to kindly please share your valuable feedback using the link. And this is very important for us to improve the further sessions. And a gentle reminder, for our next session, which is going to be on 3rd November, next Wednesday, that is 8 p.m. And uh, we have the pres case presenters with us. It's uh, Dr. Neelakshan and it's uh, Ms. Verni Bala, Verni Bala Chandran. So both of them are going to present the cases and uh, requesting both of you, because you're already here, to share, use the format, case presentation uh, template format, which we have already shared with you. And uh, gentle reminder once again, not to forget to share the feedback link. See you on 3rd November, next Wednesday, 8 p.m.
thank you once again to all of you and have a good morning and good evening uh, thank you uh, yes sir when la madam uh, when la madam that uh, feedback link is not working i think no no issues if it's working that's okay if not just leave it thank you sir thank you thank you thank you bye okay thank you thank you once again biju sir and vara sir thank you bye bye everybody uh, good night uh, sri lanka and uh, good morning canada it's uh, good night from india <laughs> yeah. thank you bye sir bye. thanks a lot i